Well, let's get started. Uh, so welcome. Uh, this is the Art of Kubernetes add-on validation, uh, secure strategies for the modern uh, developer platform. My name is Joaquin Rodriguez. I'm a software engineer at Microsoft. I'm based in Austin, Texas. Welcome. So for today's agenda, uh, we're going to be talking about cluster add-ons. Uh, I'll be introducing what they are in case you're not familiar with them. Uh, why validation is important, uh, some of the validation strategies that you can take um, and, and implement. Also, I'll be talking about secure rollouts, and I will conclude uh, today's presentation with a demo. So closer add-ons, why, what are they and what do, why do we care? So closer add-ons are tools, they're applications, or services that enhance the functionality of a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, they provide essential capabilities that are not included in the core Kubernetes components. So if you think about Kubernetes, we know Kubernetes is great. And if you implement a vanilla cluster, it can just do so much. You need to enhance it. You need to expand it. So that's what cluster add-ons are here for. Uh, customization, just like I was saying, um, they allow you to customize your Kubernetes cluster according to the specific requirement uh, of that cluster. So no, all cluster is the same. Some clusters might have different requirements, so it just really depends on what is that you're trying to do. Uh, resource management, so add-ons help us manage resources uh, to make sure that everything is running smoothly and, and you know, as, as you're expecting it to be. And also you're making sure that your resources are not uh, being wasted. Um, so basically, also, you have an add-on ecosystem. So these add-ons are meant to interact. Well, in some cases, they are meant to interact with one another. So when we are validating, we need to check that, that when you're having these integrations between um, add-ons, you know, they, they're working as, as they're expected. So uh, these are some examples of cluster add-ons. Uh, you can group them in different categories, such as monitoring and logging, networking and communication, security and authorization and storage. Um, I'm kind of curious, by show of hands, who has used any of these? Yeah, pretty much everybody. Uh, so that's great. So OK, and then why do we need to validate these add-ons? So the first thing is uh, you w we want them to be compatible, right? So when you deploy these uh, add-ons, uh, you need to make sure that they're compatible with, for example, the Kubernetes version. Uh, as Kubernetes progresses, you know, things might change, APIs might change, you know, things can, you know, get, uh, you know, just different, right? So you need to make sure that they're compatible. Uh, you want to improve security. Uh, for example, you want to uh, identify possible, poss possible vulnerabilities uh, just to make sure that, you know, you're not putting things at risk. Uh, performance, uh, you want to um, make sure that, you know, you're not doing something that is going to exhaust your resources and, you know, make the cluster go crazy. Uh, like, for example, if you deploy something with no um, limits, like CPU or memory limits, uh, that could be an issue. Uh, so when we validate, we want to check those type of things. Uh, facilitate upgrades. So sometimes um, when, we, when we want to provision from one cluster to another, right? Let's say, you know, going from dev to test, you know, before we do that upgrade, we want to make sure that it's working as expected. So when we validate and we try to upgrade, then we, we don't have that issue, right? Well, in some cases, we do have issues. But for the, <laughs> for the best case scenario, you know, we, we expect it not to have any, any issues. And of course, each cluster might have its own configuration, uh, and, and we want to make sure that we're validating against that. So today I'll be presenting a few strategies to do validation. Um, I just want to say a disclaimer. These are not uh, inclusive. So basically, you can implement them as, you, as needed. You don't have to do them all. You know, in some scenarios, you might need one or two. In some, you might need all. So it's really up to you what it is that you're doing and what it is that you're trying to validate. So the first thing is uh, uh, static code analysis. And then we're going to be checking for Helm chart validation, image validation, uh, validating using policies and rules. And then at the end, we're going to be doing some integration testing using secure rollouts. So let's start with the first one, which is linter validation strategy. 
um, or you know, static code analysis. So even before we deploy our add-ons into the cluster, uh, we want to make sure that they are correct. And that's why linting helps for this. Um, there's some open source tools that can help you. Uh, for example, one of them is Kubelinter. Uh, so Kubelinter is awesome. Uh, you can run this tool uh, against a YAML, and then it will tell you, you know, for the most part, what's wrong with it, if there's anything wrong with it. So as you can see here with this example, uh, I'm, I'm just validating a simple deploy file. And it found some issues. Uh, basically, I'm trying to run as non-root. I forgot to put my CPU and my memory limits. Uh, and it, you know, it, it would tell me about that. Other one that is pretty good, kubeconform. It works very similar to kubelinter. Uh, kubeconform validates against the Kubernetes API. Um, and then the other one is kubescore. Uh, when you run kubescore, it will tell you like a little score on how compliant your uh, YAML is. Uh, in terms of which one is better, I don't have the answer to that. It's really up to you to test them out and, and you know, compare them depending on whatever needs you have. Um, but the cool thing about these tools is that you can run them as part of your CI flow. So whenever you're doing something with YAMLs or you're trying to validate something, you can integrate these tools in your uh, CI uh, workflow. And then it will, you know, you, you can basically abort the, the CI flow if there's an issue, you know. Uh, next thing is Helm chart validation. So this is very useful, especially if you're creating your own um, add-on. Or if you're you know, importing an add-on from somebody else and you want to make sure that um, they're working correctly. The first thing is Helm Lint. So a lot of people don't know about this, but Helm has a built-in Lint tool that you can run against uh, Helm charts. And basically, it will tell you, you know, if you did a typo or if things are not looking as you expected. So it will, it will, just, it will just tell you, and it's, it's pretty neat. You can also install different plugins. So the first one uh, is Helm Unit Test. So just like as if you're writing code, you can write unit tests for your Helm chart. And basically, you know, you can put different checks that you can run, run against. And then if something fails, it will, it will tell you. And also, just like I was mentioning in the previous slide, kubeconform, you can actually integrate kubeconform uh, as a Helm plugin. And by doing that, um, what it does actually, it cannot use this Helm template to transform your Helm chart into a plain YAML. And then they will apply validation towards it. So it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty, pretty useful. Uh, next thing is uh, container image validation strategy. So again, if you're making your own add-on or if you're trying to deploy an add-on that already exists, um, you want to check for vulnerabilities before they make it into the cluster. So there are some pretty cool tools that you can use, such as Gripe or Trivi. Uh, they're open source. And basically what it does is, as also as part of your CI flow, you can run your images. You can, no, you can scan your images, and it will report for any vulnerabilities. Um, these tools have uh, different databases uh, that you can, that, that it checks for, for issues, and then it will report you for those issues. Um, and then they're integration friendly. These tools also uh, can be incorporated into your CI uh, workflow. And they're open source and they're free, so that's that's pretty cool. Okay, uh, something that is very important to keep in mind. So let's say you already deploy your image into the cluster, and then a few weeks later, your image was known to be, you know, vulnerable to some some to some flaw that was disco discovered somewhere, right? How can you continuously be checking for new issues if this you know database uh, gets upgraded? You, get, you can use Harbor. So with Harbor, you can host your own images inside of a Kubernetes cluster. And then inside Harbor, you can have uh, plugins that integrate with Gripe or Trivi. And then so if in the future there's a new issue, uh, you can you know, be alerted that, hey, there's a new issue detected in this image. Do something about it. Uh, the next strategy is using policies and rules. Uh, one of my favorite tools is Kyberno. So basically, Kyberno is a Kubernetes native policy engine that automates validation, or you can do things like mutation, generation of Kubernetes resources, uh, and also you can define you know, policies. Uh, you can automate security and compliance. Uh, you can enforce uh, 
predefined security standards for clusters add-ons automatically. Uh, Real-time validation, the cool thing about this is even before you try to deploy something into a cluster, if that thing that you're trying to deploy um, invalidates some of your policy, it will, it will basically stop that deployment from happening. So it, it will say, nope, you cannot come in, you cannot deploy that because you're violating this, so don't do it. Uh, and just like that, also, you can prevent misconfigurations. Again, if you're trying to deploy something that is not compliant to your standards, it will block it. Uh, and again, enforce best practices. So this is an example that I got from the Kyberno docs. It's pretty useful, and it explains to you how basically Kyberno works, uh, keep putting in simple terms. So you have a policy, and that policy might have one or more uh, rules, right? Each rule will match some sort of object. You can think of like a namespace or a deployment or a label or, or something. And either you're going to match that or you're going to exclude that. And if you do that, then you can do a validation or you can maybe mutate, mutate something or you can generate something or you can verify an image. I have an example here of a policy. So basically what this policy is doing um, is checking for resources of the, of the kind pod. So if you have a pod that is mounting secrets uh, using environment variables, basically it's gonna say, no, you cannot do that. You know, you need to mount them as volumes. So therefore you cannot, this pod cannot exist. So this just, you know, just providing some context on how Kyberno works. You can do a lot of crazy stuff with it. Um, I have another example in the demo that basically it checks for uh, vCluster secrets, and every time there's a new secret uh, of vCluster in, in, in my Kubernetes cluster, it will automatically pick it up and register it in Argo. Um, yeah, it sounds kind of wicked, but it works really well. Uh, my next strategy is validating using rings and secure rollouts. So just to explain uh, how this works, so with a, a ring deployment, uh, you, you can think about it as phases, right? So you have a phase deployment strategy that breaks down the rollout into different stages from, small, from a small control group outwards towards the entire infrastructure. Uh, this method reduces risks and allows for thorough checks at each uh, setup, at each step, sorry. Uh, why use ring deployments for Kubernetes add-ons? So first of all, it's safe. Uh, it allows for the incremental validation uh, and monitoring to identify and mitigate potential issues early. It reduces the impact of updates or new deployments on production workloads. And also, you can use actually GitOps for using green deployments. So if you haven't used GitOps, uh, you can use Git as a single source of truth for declarative infrastructure. So basically, your Git repo is the source of truth, and whatever you deploy in there, uh, a GitOps agent such as Argo or Flux will pick it up and it will deploy it into your cluster. Uh, so how does this work? So the first thing is you have, for example, like a dev cluster, and you're gonna do the initial validation ring, so you're gonna do your deployment into this dev environment. Um, and then once it passes, and you know, make sure that things are, or the cluster add-on is, is validated in your dev cluster, then you're gonna move to the next cluster, which is the, the pre-prod environment. Um, and here, basically, you, you want your pre-prod to match as close as possible to your production cluster. That way you can you know, do the next phase of uh, deployment, and then you can, you can validate at this level. And if everything is looking good in pre-prod, then you can move into production, uh, and then you can do the testing. Well, you cannot do testing in production, but you can make sure that the things are working as expected. Now, as a bonus, uh, once you move into pre-prod or production, and then you can use a progressive delivery tool, such as Argo rollouts or Flagger, you know, just to make sure that you know, things are rolling out smoothly, and then you can do rollbacks uh, if needed. And also, like, instead of just, you know, unplugging one thing and plugging another thing, you can do it smoothly and, you know, doing progressively, you know, in, in these environments. Okay, so next, yeah. So today I'll be doing a demo uh, for progressive delivery. 
uh, of these add-ons across uh, different phases, you know, dev, test, and production. Uh, so let's start with a basic uh, cluster, right? In this cluster, we can call it a management cluster. And what we're doing here is we're installing Argo. Argo is listening to a configuration repo for a management cluster. And as soon as it does that, it will install a few add-ons. Um, and these add-ons are, you know, Grafana, basically, so I can see some dashboards that I can check for the integration. Thanos for storing my metrics uh, long-term, and then Prometheus. Also have an Nginx ingress controller for accessing, you know, Grafana. And then Argo is gonna manage a fleet of clusters. Um, this is a hub-spoke model. You can go many ways around this. I chose this way just, you know, for demo purposes, and it's a lot easier to explain. So basically, my, this Argo instance is managing my dev fleet, my production fleet, and my pre-prod fleet. Um, of course, when you do it this in, in production, you might do this differently. You know, you might have one instance for, one Argo instance for dev, one Argo instance for pre-prod, and then another one for production. Or maybe you can have Argo running on, at each cluster separately. Uh, it's really up to you, but again, for demo purposes, I'm, I'm using this. Um, and then on my dev fleet, I have a few virtual clusters running uh, with different versions of Kubernetes. Uh, so you can see here, uh, I have two clusters running version 1.28, and then I have another two running 1.27. And then for my pre-prod fleet, I have two virtual clusters, uh, and then I have two AKS clusters. And then my production fleet, it's basically a mirror of my uh, pre-production fleet. And then I have Kyverno uh, with the policy that will enable or disable add-ons across this fleet, and I'll show that in a second how that works. And then each cluster um, will have a version of Prometheus and a version of Pod Info uh, running. Uh, and then basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna be increasing the, the version of Prometheus and Pod Info across these um, this fleet, you know, dev production, pre-production and, and production. Uh, just to make sure that they're working as expected. Also something to notice, uh, since I'm using Prometheus and PodInfo as my add-ons, um, each add-on has its own Git repo, and each Git repo has a branch for each environment. That way I can have a little more control as far as what is that I'm deploying to what cluster. So you might have, I don't know, uh, in my dev clusters running version of Prometheus, I don't know, version two, and then on, on pre-production I have version one, for example. Um, so by having this type of setup, then I can be taking a look at how you know, things are moving across each uh, environment. And it will make, make more sense when I, when I show this uh, during, during the demo. And last but not least, Prometheus is doing a remote write back to Thanos, so, uh, so each cluster has Prometheus and is writing back to Thanos. That way I can aggregate all my data and then I can just have um, and like a nice dashboard on Grafana that will, will, will show me how things are integrating. Okay, so for my demo, the first thing I would like to show, I have this Grafana uh, dashboard in which I have my environments already defined. So you can see here dev, pre-prod, and production, right? And you can see here uh, in dev, I have my four clusters. Um, all of them are running Prometheus version 2.44, and also they're running pod info version 6.6. Um, now these clusters are a little different. Uh, well, three of them are version 1.28, and one of them is 1.27. And as you can see here, things are running smoothly. Um, you can see that I have some metrics coming from my app for each environment, or for each cluster. Uh, you can see, you can track the average request per cluster. So things are working fine. Then if I move into my pre prod environment, um, I have two clusters that are already upgraded to version 2.44 for Prometheus, and the other two are running the older version, which is 2.42. Um, they're running the same version of PodInfo, and again, they're also uh, different versions of Kubernetes. 
Uh, the ones that have the K3S are virtual clusters, and the ones that don't, they are my AKS clusters. So for my demo, I actually pre-recorded it because uh, doing the progressive delivery takes, takes some time, and I didn't want to waste your time, so um, I just recorded it and cut the, the waiting um, periods. Okay. So here, again, like I was explaining, we have our uh, pre-prod, and right now my Prometheus version for all of them are 2.42. And then I'm going to go into, I'm going to pause this really quick. I'm going to go into my repo that manages the uh, Prometheus add-on. And I am in my pre-prod branch. I have a base uh, customization, and then I have some overlays. So for my East cluster, I'm going to bump the Helm chart for that um, Prometheus instance. So I'm replacing it with version 46.0. And then I'm doing the same thing for West. OK. And then I'm going to do a commit and push. OK. So now, if you see I have an Argo instance running, it's going to pick up that, that change. So it's saying, hey, I found something in my West US 2 cluster. Um, let's sync it up. So it's syncing. And then, oh, the same thing for East. I am going to uh, use the cluster to connect to my uh, East US cluster. And then you can see here that I have the, my old instance from Prometheus running that was deployed like two days ago. And then you can see the new instance um, starting to be deployed. Okay, and then if I go back to my uh, Grafana chart, now you can see on pre-prod that I have version 2.44 deployed, and now, okay, well, that, that was the pre-recorded part, so I'm going to go back to the live Grafana. So now you can see that, you know, they're deployed. I can filter by them, so I'm going to just use the East US and West US 2. And you can see now, just by looking at my metrics, that this uh, application is working as I expected. You know, every 30 seconds I'm getting a request as I'm expected. And my request duration is very, very low, as I'm expected. So I can integrate, I can make sure, or, oh, sorry. I can validate that this integration between Prometheus and PodInfo um, is working. The last thing I wanted to show you, uh, if I go into Argo, and if I go into settings, you can see that I have my fleet of clusters uh, defined. And each fleet of clusters have its own labels. These labels, I'm uh, controlling them via Kyverno. But here you can see, as an example, that I have Prometheus enabled. So if I were to go back to my, to my Kyverno policy and set this to false, then basically I'm shutting down that add-on, which is pretty powerful you know, if, if you want to do things across large numbers of uh, fleets. Um, it looks like this. Let me go back. So this is my atom validation repo. So in this repo, I have everything that, I, that controls the management cluster and also the, the fleet of clusters. So I have my Kyverno policies, one for AKS, one for B cluster. If I open the one on B cluster, then I have one policy per environment, so one for dev, one for pre-prod, one for production. And then right here, you have, uh, you have the cluster labels. So you can see that I have some add-ons that I have disabled, such as OPA or Cert Manager, but I have my pod info and Prometheus uh, to be enabled. So by doing that, then these labels will be injected into my cluster. In, well, not into my cluster, into my Argo instance of clusters. 
And then if I go into workload and I open an app set, so this application set in Argo is the one that is installing the add-ons across all the clusters, all my dev clusters. So I have this rule here. Let me see if I can find it. Basically, it's saying, okay, from all the labels that you have in those clusters, let's pick up the ones that are true and are also as part of PodInfo and Prometheus. And then I want you to deploy that into my uh, fleet of clusters. And by doing that, basically, I have more control uh, if I want to deploy these across the, you know, my fleet of clusters. Uh, and then, so once I do that, then, you know, you can check at each stage, right? Like at, at, each, at each environment, like, you know, between dev, test, and, and prod, that if it works on dev, then you can progressively test, test in the pre-production environment. And if that works, then you can move on to the production environment. Okay, so let's go back to my slides. Okay, so just to recap, so cluster add-ons are super important and they need to validate it uh, to prevent issues. Um, there are so many strategies to validate these add-ons. The ones that I just presented, there are just a few of them, but there are a lot more out there that you can you know, implement. Um, also, open source is awesome uh, because you can get a lot of uh, free tools that can you need integrate in your workloads. And if you use the right tools, then you can secure your environments. And that will be it. Thank you so much. <laughs>